Falcons. Let's go to the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, PFF give them, gives them an A+. Plus. Again, PFF, our, our grades are based off the big board and getting value relative to the big board. Layatu, Latu certainly going to help. On the composite, Colts are 10. Number 10, they were ranging from a C plus to PFF's A plus. Yeah, pretty harsh, C plus. I love this draft, obviously. Um, Layatu Latu in the first. A.D. Mitchell, the receiver out of Texas in the second. Mon, um, Matt Goncalves, the tackle out of Pittsburgh in the third. Tanner Bordellini, center out of Wisconsin in the fourth. Anthony Gold, wide receiver out of Oregon State. Um, I also like Jalen Simpson, the safety out of Auburn, getting him in the fifth round. So, yeah, it was a good draft, I think, by the Colts. I would be interested to see the, the, the drafts that or the graders that didn't like this draft, what were the main criticisms? Because even if you use the – like, Latu almost feels like a reach in the middle of the first round relative to where some people thought he would go, but yet he was actually 14th on the consensus board. It's actually like, bang, where he should have gone. And, and I think that is factoring in – the potential medical risk, the fact that his athleticism wasn't mind-blowing relative to guys like Dallas Turner. And yet, you know, we've been talking about him all the way through. Number one, the athleticism on the field, the PFF gas is like 99th percentile. It says that on the field, when he's actually playing football, he's as athletic as any edge rusher in this draft. Number two, his production profile is off the charts good. Like, it's better than Aiden Hutchinson, Will Anderson Jr. It's up there with the Miles Garretts, with the, with the Bosa brothers, with the Chase Youngs of the world. Like, he's sort of between those two tiers is where we're talking about in terms of production, and he's athletic. So 15 is a steal to get. I mean, there's a video out there of Chris Ballard just, like, laughing his balls off because he's like, we got the best rusher in this draft at 15 overall. This is crazy. And then Adonai Mitchell in the second round, I think, is a steal as well. I can't believe I, – I really thought the NFL would fall in love with his traits and, and what he can be, even if there's a lot of polish to be done um, compared to some other receivers. I'm, I'm kind of amazed he fell to 52. I don't know if it's attitude. You know, that, there, was, there was Bob McGinn, anonymous scout quotes that were like, it's a fair character assassination of Adonai Mitchell that linked it to – his type 1 diabetes, which, I mean, I don't have or know anybody with type 1 diabetes personally, but people will tell you that it's the kind of thing where if you're not able to completely stay on top of your blood sugar level, it's the kind of thing that can cause you to be moody and or, you know, sort of forgetful or whatever. Like, there's a bunch of character traits that are directly tied to have you managed your blood sugar level correctly or not, which doesn't necessarily mean, like, you know, this is something that somebody needs to get on top of but isn't necessarily like a flaw in their character if they haven't yet it's it needs you know he can be helped along in that route if that's what the problem is so Adonai Mitchell to me in the second round is an absolute steal as well those top two picks home runs yeah I mean we've talked a lot about Latu here um again I think we landed on from a medical report standpoint the risk is not he'll be on and off the field nonstop throughout his career the risk might be you might only get four or five years out of him before he starts to get a little injury prone, gets banged up, maybe a Leighton Van Der Esch situation where he is on and off the field at some point and then possibly forced to hang him up. Or and even that is speculation. I mean, he's played, <clears throat> he's played two solid years, two high volume years since the neck injury thing. He was playing rugby when they medically retired him. Like, Washington medically retired him, and his response to that was, oh, well, I guess we'll go play another contact sport with no pads now. He loves ball. He just right. loves ball. Went and played rugby, and played it at number eight, which, as you'll know, Steve, for a rugby aficionado. And eight's a physical position. There you go, and right? Eight. Yeah. <coughs> Hard not, ball carrying. Yeah, not many could, can handle the eight. <laughs> not many. Certainly rugby. not those get, that have been medically retired with a neck issue. Right. It's not, it's not your normal transition. <laughs> not at all. Um, and then, obviously, two – high volume years of play at UCLA so the people that were concerned about his neck were mentioning that it might be a Marcus McNeil you know long-term degenerative thing but that is speculation it might be nothing like he might just be over it yeah and then on the field again you know <clears throat> the Colts had historically just drafted um the the highest level athlete of any other team in yep. the NFL they didn't really go that route here and, you know, Latu, as far as, like, combine measurables go, um, again, at least I'd say two-thirds of the league has access to 
the on-field game metrics and the uh, things like PFF gas and other versions of that. So um, with, between Latu's game athleticism and just that production, man, you're talking about they got, instead of a high upside, let's just trust the traits or trust the athleticism, the traits that Latu brings to the table is just knowing how to win, man, knowing how to rush the passer, knowing how to use his hands and set up tackles. And they, they add him to the mix on that defensive line. I think he's got a chance to be productive right away. And then, again, with A.D. AD Mitchell, I think there's a handful of teams here who probably came away with two guys who had first-round grades on their board, whatever a first-round grade looks like. If you have 15 of them or 17, at least two guys who were expected to go in the top 32. A.D. Mitchell was very much in the running to be wide receiver 5, and he was wide receiver 10 or 11 or whatever it was. And so they got to feel good about that and his ability. He was a vertical receiver at Texas, didn't create a lot after the catch because he didn't have a lot of opportunities. If they use him in a similar role where he's, where he's athletic and can get up at the catch point, make big plays, that's a nice compliment to Michael Pittman Jr. And it's a nice compliment to Josh Downs, who they got last year to work the slot. It pushes Alec Pierce to wide receiver four, where he can just be uh, the occasional over-the-top vertical threat. And so the weapons for Anthony Richardson, I think, really coming together here for the Colts. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I think those top two picks were home runs. I think the next two picks are really solid offensive line depth that can be important for them. Uh, Anthony oh. Gould in the fifth, I think, is an interesting player because you almost forget what he does as a receiver. Like, he's a really devastating return man. Um, punt returns primarily. But I wonder if... I wonder if generally teams this draft were sort of refocused on potential kick return options now that the kick return is back with the new rules. Um, Gould is a guy that, I, given how good he was as a punt returner, I would absolutely give him a shot to be the kick returner as well and see if we can, you know, really turbocharge that area of the game. Um, just as, for those two offensive line picks, I liked Bordellini better than Galcaves based off of the, uh, the model. Ah. Galcaves is uh, he's in the teens Ooh. as far as the, we'll say, the draft model score goes which isn't great, um, not a history of hitting there. He's another guy where his, his measurables are all below what you normally see from, from good tackles. So interesting move for the uh, to difference for the Colts there. It, like, to me, that's different than getting uh, Bernard Ryman in the third round a couple of years ago who did probably have that starting upside. I'm not sure Gal 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 Calves has that necessarily. But Terno Bordellini and Anthony Gold were both a part of my upside article that I wrote just before the draft do have the measurables that tend to translate at the next level. So I think Bordellini's got a chance. And you mentioned Gold. He's another deep threat. I mean, I think he competes with Alec Pierce with a completely different body type, but competes for wide receiver for uh, vertical threat option. So I think they added some explosiveness there. Um, and I mentioned Jalen Simpson, I think, is a good player as far as fifth round safety goes. Don't have a strong take on any of the other guys that the Colts got there. But um, based off the PFF board, uh, Trevor's calling it an A+. Plus getting guys higher than than we had them, you know, or, you know, getting them in a good spot relative to where we had them ranked. I haven't checked what the uh, the RAS, the relative athletic score is for all these guys, which the Colts are usually like nine and a half and above out of 10, essentially, for the athletes they're selecting. But this feels like the, the least RAS heavy draft yeah. that the Colts have had in a while. And as I've said, it was, I, I don't like positioning it as like that's this data point that they have stacked up on the board. They just tend to lean toward athletic traits historically, but it yeah, does I mean, whatever like they're they lean using, toward football players. Right. Whatever they're using clearly has some kind of you know connection or corollary to, to RAS. Anything else on the Colts? Uh, they got uh, Keaton Slovis in uh, as an undrafted free agent an undrafted free agent slovis had one of the to me most surprising combines everything was good as far as his workout numbers and then he threw the ball really hard too <laughs> like he was he complete he plays like a non-developmental prospect right an underwhelming he plays like an underwhelming athlete underwhelming arm type of guy bounced around to four different schools was it usc Pitt, byu i might be missing one in there um, but then he tested extremely well. So I know, yeah, some people did really want to get him in the building to work with.